Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. On today's show, we talk about fighting big fish. Everything you need to know to be successful in taking these big lugs. It's gonna be a great show, so stay with us. Let him go back to live another day. Oh, baby. Look at that fish. We talked earlier about having the optimum conditions. Here we've got perfect conditions. This is a good example of the family heptogeneity. This is why you need a lot of backing. The new Fly Fisher was made possible thanks to Ontario, yours to discover, Scientific Anglers, Islander Precision Reels. As novice fly fishers, we all occasionally hook into a big fish. This experience usually is short due to the lack of experience fighting these large animals. As the fly fisher becomes more experienced, the chances of hooking into a large fish become more probable and sometimes predictable. Today we'll talk about fighting big fish in moving water and also in still water. At the earliest time possible, you must get the line on the reel. Though only do this once you have control of the fish. Many fish are lost as the angler tries to get the line on the reel while forgetting to keep tension on the fish. Once the fish stops, take this opportunity then to reel in the slack. Often once a large fish makes its first initial run, the slack line is picked up off the water automatically. It's important to use your finger to pinch the line against the rod as it's being drawn out. This will keep a firm and even tension on the line. See if we can hurt him back using side pressure. Let's get the net here. Once that fish is starting to show its sides, usually it's beaten. This one's starting to tire. Jaws, ouch. He's got it in there. I can't see where, though, to get it out. There it is, right on the side. So he probably took this fly in and turned, and that's when I felt it, and that drove it right into the scissors of the jaw, right in the, for the upper and lower jaw meat right behind the eye. Let's see if I can get him up here. There he is. Nice big brown. Get them up so the viewers at home can see them. And again, if I just support the fish, hold on to his tail, don't squeeze him, he'll sit quite calm. So let's get him into the water here. Get out of the way. We'll just hold him there and admire him. Look at the coloration. What a beautiful specimen. Big male. See how the jawline comes behind the eye, starting to get that prominent kipe. Females, their eyes seldom extend past their eye. Their jaws rather seldom extend past the rye. That is a beautiful fish. There he goes, he's revving up, he's fighting me. I want him to fight me a couple of times to make sure he's truly good and ready, and off he goes. He's gotta come to the parkland. I was just swinging the, the fly around, and all I felt... Allow the fish to run. Don't hold on for dear life by clamping the line onto the rod with your hand. This is a primary mistake most novice anglers make when fighting their first big fish. Not allowing the fish to run will result in a fish pivoting on a taut line. This in turn will result in the hook being torn out or the tippet breaking. Instead, let the fish run and apply a moderate tension to the line by using the reel drag or palming the reel with your hand. Using less than maximum pressure will allow a cushion against an unexpected surge of the fish or a mistake on your part. Oh, what a deadly hit. What a deadly now, hit. Now he's run way downstream on me and I'm very, very concerned about it. Fighting him gingerly. 
If he decides he wants to run, I'm letting him run. That's, a, that's important when fighting any kind of big fish. When they decide they want to run, you got to let them. Don't try to resist it. As long as you can pull them in, pull them in. But you see them, feel them resist, and you can feel them, let them run. Very good fish. Just at the head of the pool, he picked that fly up, eh? There he goes. So we'll talk about the tactic itself with Mike when we're done here, what, how we're taking apart these pools. We're not just barging into a pool. We're starting at the top and working our way down. Good fish. Ready? And nicely done. All right. Look at that nice egg sucking leech right in the corner of the mouth there. So that's a fully purple marabou egg sucking leech with a big orange bead. And it's tied out of one complete feather, which makes it very, you can see how it's moving in the water there, just out of the mouth. I'll simply go in and unhook that. It's a very nice prime steelhead hen, pushing about five pounds maybe. Great shape. We'll let her go for another day. Do you love fly fishing? Are you wanting to learn how to fly fish? Then subscribe to the new Fly Fisher online magazine. It's free. Each issue is filled with great stories, information on techniques, tackle, and fly patterns. You can view this magazine on your personal computer, smart tablet, or other device. Each issue contains great stories, photography, and instructional video. To subscribe, go to www.thenewflyfisher.com. When a large fish leaps in the air, you must introduce some slack into the line. This is a technique known as bowing to the fish. Listen as Glenn Hales and myself discuss this technique. It came red, red and white. Screamer. Red and white seems to be what they wanted right now. Oh man, big head shakes. Big head shakes. He's staying down, which is unusual for a muskie. They generally, they generally jump quite a bit. And if he jumps, I'm gonna bow here to comes, him. Here he comes, here he comes. Here he comes. That's a nice Put the fish. rod down when he jumped. It's a good fish. Don't hold your rod up high when he jumps. I have to tire this guy out. Very, very, ah, oh man, incredibly fast take. You know, it's just a blur with a fish coming by when you see him take. He's getting there. He's getting there, yeah, he's starting to get tired. Got a good hook set in there. Got a good hook set, yeah. Good fish. Still got spunk in them too. Yeah. Incredibly strong. That's what it's all about. Yeah, that's what it's all about, that's for sure. Very good, Glenn. <laughs> Beautiful. That is what it's all about. Thanks, nice fish, Bill. <laughs> Folks. Almost gone on a fly. This is my first muskie on a fly. I've caught muskie before, but this is my first one on the fly. I'm very excited about it. As the fish runs farther away from you, you must decrease your drag. Now, this sounds crazy, but you must remember the mass of the line moving through the water creates resistance. This, along with a tight drag, will place too much pressure on the fish and will result in either a pulled hook or a broken tippet. As you bring the fish in closer, you may again start to carefully tighten your drag. Backing, that's exciting. Apply side pressure when fighting a big fish. 
Applying strictly overhead pressure allows the fish to use its large muscles which are designed to move the fish in a forward motion. When you apply side pressure, the fish is not equipped to resist such pressure efficiently. Once you feel the fish turn, you simply turn the rod in the opposite direction. This will keep the fish constantly off balance and using energy to continue the fight. <laughs> He's starting to tire. You or him? Both of us, actually. <laughs> I just, I love catching big fish. I love catching big fish. Right heat right there, give him the right heat. There you go, okay. I'm not even gonna touch the leader in this guy. We're just gonna lift him, because if okay. I grab that leader and he gives one shake, he's gone. So I'm just gonna wait till you got him where I can slip him there. So I can put this in a different place. Come here, baby. The old fish. All right. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh. oh. And do you have a new record? I can't see it. You do, 20 pounds. 20 pounds, <laughs> all right. Oh. Look at that. Oh. All right. Oh man, this is something else. I can't even hold it up. Oh. 20 right on the nose. 20 pounds. <laughs> yes. Two days in a row. Yes, <laughs> yes. Two days in a row. And we've seen fish bigger than this. Yeah, I know we did. <laughs> oh, this is something else. Oh, right there man. is what it's all about. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Great, great. All right, you want photos? I grew up in the south. So. That is a big carp right there. Look at the size of the tail on this fish. Think he's eating a few crawdads? Yeah, you think so, yeah. Woo. Oh, the way he turned on that, my goodness. Great. Let's see how long your record holds. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for world-class fishing at reasonable prices? Want the best of bass, brook trout, pike, and walleye fishing that is easily accessible? Then come to the Algoma region in Northern Ontario. Easy to access by road, plane, or even train, Algoma features some of the best fishing in the world. To learn more, go to algomaregion.com or call toll free 1-800-263-2546. Yeah, good fish, good fish, good when fish, good targeting fish. big fish, the equipment you use will be paramount in your success. Large arbor reels capable of retrieving line fast are needed. This along with a smooth drag is also important. A rod with a fighting handle and a powerful butt section is important also. This is for controlling the fish. Do not under-equip yourself by using a light rod to take a big fish. This will usually kill the fish and you'll also run the risk of breaking your equipment. There we go, fish on, good fish. Oh yeah, good fish, good fish, good fish, yeah. We're you must move with on. the fish as it travels downstream or upstream. Yep. Trying to stand in one spot to fight a large fish is a definite mistake. As you move towards the fish, attempt to wind your line on the reel. As you make progress in getting closer to the fish, try to get below it. Once you're below the fish, it must then fight both the rod pressure and the current. Any coaching will be welcome, John. Billy, the most important thing when you're fighting a big fish is just to maintain, that's it, your low rod. That way you keep the fish down deeper in the pools. Right. So, so you're fighting them in the slower water underneath. Okay, especially these cold water <clears throat> winter fish like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's absolutely imperative. And the other thing, you've got that nice fighting butt on that rod. Put that right up underneath your forearm. Right. And always maintain the pressure him. on about a 45 degree angle off your there chest. He is. This is exciting, John. That's a good fish, bud. Yeah. It's not about numbers at this time of year. It's about quality fish. I have a very nice buck here. 
Watch the boulders. Yeah, I seen that. He just created, got to keep his head up. Well, we get that fish ready to land, I'm going to let you bring them to me, OK? OK. You coach me on any way you want me yeah. to do it, I'll do it. This water is extremely cold. Makes them that much more vibrant. <laughs> He's really shaking his head hard. Well, this is what you've been working all morning for, Bill. Yes, yes. Persistence pays off. You know, we got that little bit of cloud cover. If you notice, the light's a little bit darker now. Right, yeah. Yeah. So that just might have triggered him up a little bit, right? Oh, look at him shake his head, beauty. Look at some head shaking. Now, we got seven pound tippet, but I'm not going to allow him. I'm going to play him like a safe cracker. Real beautiful, easy. beautiful colors. This one is all oh, dressed right out, beautiful. A lot of ice around here right now. The temperature dropped like a stone last night. Now bring your rod down low to the side, Bill, and back towards me. That's back it. Back towards you? Yep. So you work him into the shallows. OK. Now, he's not going to like it when he gets this feels This is a those... big fish. This is a very big fish. Watch your rod tip in the trees. Yep. Now back over towards me a little bit. I want a good headshot at him with the net, OK, Bill? Just like that. Perfect. That was an excellent land. That was. Congratulations, so my friend. Cool, my friend. Oh, look at him. Look at the colors. Look at the colors, how bright it is. He's dressed right out. Now, you notice, Bill, the one thing, and not a lot of people talk about this. Like, but see the importance of the net? Exactly. When you, how many times have you ever handled a fish where you fumbled it, fumbled it because you didn't have a net with you? Right. Let it slide. These fish are very slimy. Yeah. Steelhead, right? We want to release this fish unharmed. And if you notice, I have yet to lift his weight out of the water. That's right. OK? So I have the absolute control. So the arguments for and against use of nets, this is the only way to handle a fish. Absolutely. I agree with you. Holding the blank above the cork handle to draw the fish toward you is a huge mistake that can cost you your expensive graphite rod. This technique hinges the rod and places all the strain on the blank where the hand is placed. This in turn eventually collapses the blank and the rod will break. Always use the cork handle to fight the fish. And what that does, if a fish starts to jump on you, he pulls the line as he jumps, so what I want to do is point my rod at him so the line will slip through the water easier. Oh, it's a slab. Again, side pressure. One advantage that you do have in a lake over a stream is you don't have a whole lot of rocks and things to, to worry about unless you get too close to the, to the grass here or the shore. But we're far enough out, I shouldn't have that problem. Very, very exciting fishing here. These fish, whoa, this is great. And they don't give up, that's for sure, they don't give up. This is a very large rainbow. It's definitely a rainbow. I got to look at him that time. Again, notice how when he decided he was going to run, I let him go. What I'm looking for is him to start to turn on his side a little bit. Then I know he's ready, just about ready to, to land. And I'm going to have to, yep. Now, uh, anytime now. And we have them. That's an excellent netting job there, Brad. And we have a very nice, nice okay. Bowl. And it is a very good bowl. Let's keep. And as you can see, we have very healthy fish population here. This was a very exciting. Bring them down. And I'm going to revive them. Stop right there. Just wait. 
He's on it. He's searching. Strip hard. Yes. That was a lot of work. Very stressful. That's all 50-pound fluorocarbon on there, right to the wire. Okay. He's not sure what he ate, but he knows he's not real happy about it. What do you call that thing that was in that fly? Oh, a uh, e-chip. E-chip. Man, he locked onto it big time. Lift. First time he sees the boat, he's gonna probably go absolutely nuts. That's a nice fish. That is a good one. It's a Mexican standoff now. I think the more you can lift his head, the better. Nice. There he is. There he is. You get him in close, I'll grab his dorsal. Okay. At this point, you want to make sure you don't high stick and uh, break your rod, so I tend to kind of put it under my arm. Lift. This is a form of professional wrestling. You got it? I had it. <laughs> All right, we'll put the screws to him now. He was caught and basically released here, so. Really get him angry now. I got the stick in. All right. I got it. Time to play rodeo. <clears throat> the thing to remember with a shark is they're all cartilage, which means he can spin all the way around and bite his tail, which means you never put your hands in the water with a shark. We hope you enjoyed today's show. For more information on this episode and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, Tight Lines, and we'll see you next week. There he goes. The New Fly Fisher was made possible thanks to Ontario, yours to discover, Scientific Anglers, Sage Fly Rods, and as you can see, we have very healthy fish. Hold on to his tail, don't squeeze him. Very nice brown. Gave me a real good fight. It looks like he's ready to go. Can you release it? Yeah. Okay. Woo. There he goes. <laughs>